Hi, my name is Nicole Rossi, and I'm joined today by my mentor, Dr. Michael Dean from the National Cancer Institute. Today, we'll be discussing resolution of complex human papillomavirus and human sequences. Human papillomaviruses are among the most oncogenic cancer viruses. HPV causes nearly all cervical cancer, a disease responsible for over 300,000 deaths every year across the world. HPV also causes about half of all head and neck and anal cancers, two of the cancers that are increasing in high-income countries. As you can see from this graph, nearly all of the women afflicted by cervical cancer live in poverty within Asia and Africa. To provide some perspective, HPV is causing as many deaths in Africa and Asia as is COVID-19. In order to study cervical cancer in low and middle income countries, we established a cohort in Guatemala and recruited over 700 women collecting blood, tumor tissue, and clinical data. Human papillomavirus, which is known to cause cervical cancer, has a 7.9 kilobase genome that replicates in the nucleus as an episome. It encodes the E6 oncogene inhibiting TP53 and the E7 oncogene inhibiting RB1. HPV replication uses enzymes from the host cell's homologous recombination system, which causes inappropriate expression of these enzymes during the cell cycle, leading to genomic instability. Integration nearly always deletes E1 and E2 from the HPV genome, allowing for expression of E6 and E7 genes. HPV integrations can take many forms. They can be simple and result in a single integration with flanking human DNA. However, many times HPV integrations can be complex. There are often multiple copies of HPV and flanking DNA generated during the integration process that are not resolved by short read technology. In addition, a proposed mechanism of HPV integration involves the amplification of the HPV and flanking human DNA resulting in a looping structure seen here. Therefore, we can use nanopore long read whole genome sequencing technology to investigate these events. Here's a list of the methods and nanopore protocols that we use to accomplish this project. In addition, we utilize adaptive sampling with many of these protocols in order to target specific genes within the human genome and the HPV genome. Our cell line sequencing data has been deposited in the sequence read archive and the preprint of our paper is online. The Caskey cervical cancer cell line is known to have 600 to 800 HPV genomes in complex arrays of both the full-length HPV-16 genomes and multiple copies of a truncated HPV genome, designated here as genome A and B, respectively. These structures are integrated at 30 to 50 chromosomal locations in the tumor cell line genome. Because the same HPV genomes are integrated in multiple chromosomes, they must have arisen before integration occurred. We term this phenomenon HPV superspreading. From long read nanopore sequencing, we identified reads with human DNA on one end and HPV genomes on the other. Some of these HPV regions were so long that we were unable to sequence the entire array, and we found some HPV-only reads of up to 160 kilobases internal to these arrays. We propose that the integrated superspreading phenotype, the long tandem repeats of HPV sequences, resulted from an extra chromosomal episome that contained the many HPV genomes. Beginning as a single 7.9 kilobase episome, abnormal replication of the HPV genome may have resulted in the creation of multiple truncated and full-length HPV genomes within the episome. Integration of this episome would result in the superspreading within the human genome. So to follow up on this finding, we characterize other cell lines to further understand the superspreading phenomenon. SCC-152, a head and neck squamous cell carcinoma, contains complex HPV integrations on chromosomes 3 and 9. We performed long read sequencing on this cell line and discovered full length and two deleted forms of the HPV genome, one with 163 base pair deletion and the other with both a 163 and a 367 base pair deletion. Similar to Caskey, these truncated and full length HPV genomes are randomly arranged as integrated multimers. We observed either the 163 base pair deletion alone or the 367 base pair deletion together with the 163 base pair deletion. Therefore, the 163 deletion must have developed first. These two deletions are in the HPV regulatory region. 
and may have been selected for to increase E6 and E7 expression. This finding is in agreement with our superspreading model in which rearranged episomes give rise to complex integrations. One of the unique properties of HPV-16 is that not every tumor has an integrated virus like Caski and SEC-152. And in fact, only one-third of HPV-16 tumors have only integrated. One-third have integrated an episomal, and the last third have episomal only. But as you can see, HPV-18 and 45 differ in that they integrate almost 100% of the time. Therefore, to investigate how HPV-16 causes can cancer without integration, we characterize a unique cell line with both episomal and integrated HPV-16. SNU-1000 is a cell line which has been reported to have both episomal and integrated HPV-16. But results from whole genome sequencing revealed 150 base pair fragment of HPV integrated into the intron of CEP126 gene on chromosome 11. This fragment has a portion of the E7 gene, although it is not big enough to encode any full-length proteins. Interestingly, the integration also resulted in the amplification of the YAP1 oncogene and the BRCA2 and 3 genes, which are two genes involved in resistance to the immune response. YAP1 gene activation was shown to cause cervical cancer and reduce survival in mice in the absence of integrated HPV oncogenes, making YAP1 an important factor in cervical car carcinogenesis. This is a novel mechanism of HPV activity in which the integrated fragment of HPV does not express the E6 or E7 oncogenes, but resulted in the amplification and overexpression of cellular oncogenes. Here are the HPV-16 reads from the whole genome ligation sequencing of linear SNU-1000 DNA. The soft clipping reveals that there are large insertions within the HPV episomal reads. Some of these insertions are multiples of the 7.9 kilobase, meaning there is more than one full-length HPV genome present in some of these episomes. We coin these concatenators of genomes multimer episomes. Some of these episomes also contain a 634 base pair deletion that removes portions of the E1 and E2 genes. Here are the HPV-16 reads from the whole genome sequencing of SNU-1000. We used a rapid sequencing protocol that uses tagmentation to directly add adapters with the transposase. It can also add adapters to circular DNA molecules such as episomes. In fact, we found reads of exactly 7.9 kilobases representing monomer episomes, as well as dimers and multimers. With tagmentation, we also observe about 10 to 15 percent of episomes which contain the 634 base pair deletion that we saw previously. The bottom image depicts the arrangement of HPV genomes from a few of our long SNU-1000 reads. The blue represent full-length HPV-16 genomes, designated A. The orange is the 634 base pair deleted genomes, labeled B. And the green are scrambled genomes of different sizes. As you can see, there are HPV multimers, some having only full-length HPV and others a mix of deleted and scrambled genomes. The sequencing of SNU-1000 shows that abnormal extra-chromosomal replication of HPV can occur providing a mechanism for HPV to cause cancer without integrating. Interestingly, we find E1 and E2 deleted in episomal HPV-16, similar to what happens in integration. However, if these episomal structures were to integrate, it could lead to a complex integration event resulting in HPV superspreading, such as that seen in Caskey and SCC-152 cells. To understand whether these processes are occurring in actual tumors, we carried out long read whole genome sequencing on 62 Guatemalan cervical tumors. These tumors were previously characterized by HPV capture and short read sequencing as either episomal only or episomal and integrated. A subset of episomal only tumors, seen in the top row in red, have only intact monomer episomes, seen in the second row in green, demonstrating that HPV can cause cervical cancer in the absence of integration. The other episomal only tumors, seen in the second row in blue, contain multimer or rearranged episomes. Sequencing of episomal-only tumors have revealed complex rearrangements of their HPV genomes as well. These include HPV fragments facing opposite directions and deletions mixed in with full-length HPV genomes. Nearly all of the rearrangements have a breakpoint in the E1 or E2 genes, designated here by the blue star. 
which are predicted to impact their genetic sequence and therefore function. Some multimer or rearranged episomal only tumors have episomes that exist as a dimer. In one tumor, both HPV genomes in the dimer have a deletion in the upstream regulatory region of the HPV genome. This deletion removes two binding sites for the YY1 transcription factor that are known to repress the P97 promoter. Therefore, we think that these deletions were selected for in the evolution of the episomes to increase E6 and E7 expression in the absence of integration. Another subset of tumors, which have episomal and integrated HPV, can have complex episomes as well as complex integrations. Here are examples of the HPV rearrangements in episomal and integrated tumors. Again, we see that there are E1 and E2 genes that are frequently disrupted, designated by the blue star. Therefore, cervical tumors display multimer and rearranged episomes, as well as complex integrations. In the future, we hope to sequence some of these tumors more extensively. For preparation of this project, we began using ultra-long, high molecular weight sequencing protocol, starting with our cell line DNA. To obtain longer reads for the large integrated HPV arrays in CASCI and SCC-152 cells, and the episomal HPV multimers in SNU-1000, we prepared ultra-high molecular weight DNA using the Oxford Nanopore and Circulomix protocol. We hope to use adaptive sampling to enrich for HPV-containing reads, but our colleagues at Oxford Nanopore said that this had never been attempted as far as they knew. So we tried it for the first time, sequencing the same high molecular weight DNA with and without adaptive sampling. And we called this technique ultra-adapt. For Caskey cells, we obtained four times as many HPV-only reads and four times as many HPV human reads with ultra-adapt. We obtained HPV-containing reads as long as 350 kilobases and human reads, human-only reads of up to 1.5 megabases. The longest HPV-containing read was 347 kilobases. These longer reads helped identify blocks of HPV DNA flanked by human DNA and vice versa. Now Mike will discuss the effects of HPV integration on viral and human gene expression. The HPV genome encodes eight proteins. L1 and L2 are the structural proteins. E1 and E2 involved in replication and gene regulation and the two oncogenes, E6 and E7. The early E genes are transcribed from two promoters, and there are complex splicing events to generate multiple sets of proteins. As you heard, the E1 and E2 proteins bind to the HPV regulatory region and suppress the expression of the E6 and E7 oncogenes. Integration deletes those genes, E1 and E2, releasing that repression. Therefore, tumors undergo a switch from an E6, E7 low expression pattern to one of high oncogene expression. We carried out direct full-length cDNA sequence to determine the structure of HPV transcripts in the Caskey cell line. Poly A plus RNA is converted to full-length cDNA, and that cDNA is directly sequenced without PCR. The advantage of this approach is that the exact structure of each mRNA is determined. As you can see, there are few transcripts across the E1 gene, and the E2 gene is disrupted by the integration. In this new 1000 cell line that has only episomal HPV, the HPV expression pattern is very similar to Caskey's cells with the HPV integration. There's almost no E1 and E2 expression and abundant E6 and E7. Therefore, an episomal HPV cell line has an expression pattern similar to a cell line with HPV integration. We obtained RNA from the cervical tumors that Nicole just described and carried out PCR cDNA sequencing with barcoding. Here are three representative samples of tumors with only episomal DNA. The one on the top has monomer episomes, the one in the middle rearranged episomes, and the one on the bottom multiple episomes. In all three of these, like this new 1000 cell line, E6 and E7 expression predominates. The mechanisms of HPV expression are not well understood. We've begun to explore the epigenetic landscape of our cell lines and tumors. From our DNA sequencing, we used the Megalodon program to call 5-methylcytosine modifications and validated these calls with bisulfite sequencing on the same DNA samples. We found a very high agreement. The attraction of the nanopore data is that for reads that cross the full HPV genome, we can see the phase of all the methylated bases. 
No other technology can show this. On top are uh, the results from Caskey cells and below that SNU-1000. You can see that there's a considerable difference between the two cell lines and heterogeneity in the methylation pattern of individual HPV genomes within a cell line. There have been no studies that we know of exploring the role of 5-hydroxymethyl cytosine modifications on HPV DNA. 5-HMC modifications can be called from the same nanopore sequencing data, and our preliminary analysis suggests that this modification is present on HPV. We plan to study the role of 5-HMC in viral gene regulation. From a large panel of cervical and head and neck cell lines, we observed that HPV integration often activates local cellular genes involved in gene regulation, cancer, and cell adhesion. In this new 1005 uh, cells, the DNA repair gene RAD51B is disrupted by the integration. Therefore, further understanding of how HPV integration affects the local epi epigenome is important. One way to study this is using PORC, a chromatin interaction method adapted to nanopore sequencing. We built a library with NLA3 restriction enzyme digestion, generating over 8 million reads. From this, we have over 3 million contacts, and 1 million of these contacts are long range. There are over 12,000 HPV containing reads in this data set. 8,000 of those connect HPV to different human sequences. We hope that this will reveal new insights into how HPV integration affects the human genome. The signaling pathway that is most frequently activated in cervical cancer is the PI3K pathway. Tyrosine kinases, like the insulin receptor, uh, signal through PI3K. Almost half of all cervical tumors have either an activating mutation in the PIK3CA oncogene or deletion or inactivating mutation in the P10 tumor suppressor gene. There's now an oral FDA-approved drug to inhibit PI3K called PICRE. It's approved for use in certain types of breast cancer but its potential use in cervical cancer is not known. We tested this drug on several cervical cancer cell lines with mutations in the pathway, and the drug causes a reduction in the expression of HPV E7 oncogene protein, or its marker P16 that's shown here. As you can see on the right, the drug dramatically inhibits the proliferation of the cells, even at the lowest dose used. And interestingly, the expression of the T-cell checkpoint molecule, PDL1, is dramatically reduced. This suggests that this drug may be useful in cervical cancer patients to inhibit the growth of the tumors and to activate the patient's own T-cells to kill tumor cells. Using nanopore PCR cDNA analyses, we confirm that HPV expression is reduced at the 24 and 48 hour time points after PIC ray exposure, and we're examining the expression of additional genes. We'll also be able to follow up changes in methylation and chromatin interactions in response to the drug. We noticed the expression of several immune genes was reduced at both 24 and 48 hours after exposure to the drug, as is the IRF1 gene, a major, regulation of inter a major, major regulator of interferon expression, and many IRF target genes are also reduced. This data is going to help us dissect how the PI3K pathway is working in cervical cells and down the road in patients. In conclusion, for decades we have known that HPV can integrate into the human genome during the formation of a tumor. Now this is not a normal event for the virus, but is selected for in the cancer cell due to increased expression of HPV oncogenes and flanking cellular genes. Long-range sequencing is helping us understand the structure of these integration events. Other investigators have found that there is extra chromosomal DNA containing both HPV and human sequences, and this area needs more investigation. Less well understood has been transformation, especially for HPV-16, in the absence of integration. We see that an intact HPV genome as an episome is present in many HPV-positive tumors. However, there's also the potential for abnormal replication of these extra chromosomal structures. This leads to mutation and rearrangement of key inhibitory viral genes. And so, we are learning new ways in which HPV-16 can cause cancer. We hope in future studies to elucidate the details of these processes with the goal of reducing the cancer burden of human papillomaviruses. Here's the team that carried out much of this work in, in my lab, and they even let me do a little bit of it. And we'd like to thank our colleagues at the NCI, as well as in Guatemala, Venezuela, and Peru, as well as Mona Lina Binney from Oxford Nanopore for valuable training and advice. And we thank all of you for your attention, and we're happy to answer any questions.